What's good, math family? In today's video, we're going to look at a recent geometry EOC exam, and I'm going to break down how to properly solve and approach each of these problems. Our first problem is asking us to write the equation of a circle. And we need to know that the equation of a circle takes the format x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. And when we approach this problem, let's first start off by identifying what the center of the circle is, which is 1, 3, and the radius. So if we check out the radius, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. So if the radius is 4 and we square it, that means it's equal to 16. So from this information, we could eliminate answer choice B and D because it's the wrong radius. Now, once we plug in our x and y coordinate, right, we're going to have x minus 1 squared plus y minus 3 squared is equal to r squared, which is 16. So once we look at this, we should know that our answer choice is going to be a. If you're looking at c, what they did was they switched the coordinates around. So just be careful when you're solving these type of problems. Looking at this problem, they're asking us not for the arc length, but for theta, the degrees that will give us this arc length. And all we know is that the arc length is 20.42 and we have a radius of 10 centimeters. So the equation we're going to use to solve is arc length, right, is equal to theta over 360 multiplied by 2 pi r. And what we're looking for, family, is theta. So once we start substituting, this is what we should have. We have 20.42 is equal to theta over 360 multiplied by 2 times pi times our radius, which is 10. Now, when I simplify this, we're going to have 20.42 is equal to 62.8 theta over 360. Now, remember, we're trying to get theta by itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by this entire fraction. So once I come in here and divide by this entire fraction, we know that we would basically flip it and multiply. And this would cancel out. And when we go on the other side and do that same step. This is what we should have. So now I know theta is equal to what? 20.42 multiplied by 360 over 62.8. And once we simplify this equation and, and we solve, this is what we're going to get. So we divide 360 by 62.8. We get a decimal and we multiply that by 20.42. My final answer for theta is 117.057. When we compare that to our answer choices, the best answer choice is going to be B. As we approach this next problem, this is very similar to the last problem we did, but it is different. So first off, we're looking for the area of the shaded sector. And the formula we're going to use for that is A is equal to theta over 360 multiplied by pi r squared. We know what r is and understand theta they gave us a hint. It's a right angle. So it means it's 90. So a, the area of the shaded sector is equal to 90 over 360 multiplied by pi times 10 squared. And make sure you guys understand that they did not change pi into 3.14. So if we reduce this, we'll say area is equal to 1 over 4 multiplied by 100 pi. And once we simplify this, we're going to get area is equal to 25 pi as a final answer. As we look at this parallelogram, it's asking us to identify the values of A and B. And for us to do this, we need to understand that opposite sides are congruent in parallelogram. So what we're going to do is create equations. So we're going to say 3A minus 2B is equal to 13. And 4a plus b is equal to 21. 
Now, for us to properly solve this type of problem, we could use the same skills as systems of equations, meaning elimination or substitution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this second equation by 2 so that we could cancel out our b's. First equation stays the same. Second equation when I multiply is going to be 8a plus 2b is equal to 42. And once I simplify my b's cancel, I get 11a is equal to 55. So now once I divide by 11, I know that a is going to be equal to 5. So as a result, I look at my answer choices, c is gone, d is gone, and I could even say a is gone and the correct answer should be b. But just to make sure, let's plug this back into the original equation and test it. So I'm going to plug this back into the second original equation. So we have 4a, oops, let's go back, I, I forgot to substitute. 4a, which is 4 times 5, plus b is equal to 21. So once we simplify, we say 20 plus b is equal to 21. After we subtract 20 on both sides, we know b is equal to positive 1. So this is just a way to double check your answer to make sure you have the correct a and b or x and y. In this next problem, we're dealing with triangles and they're asking us to figure out what is the angle right what is this angle right here so we're talking about our trig functions so we're going to use that SOHCAHTOA acronym right because we have to figure out which trig function will help us determine the angle so based off that um angle we know this would be the hypotenuse this would be the adjacent side right sorry if i spelled that wrong and this would be the opposite side so when we look at opposite over adjacent, we know this is going to be tan. So we're going to use the tangent function and we're going to say tan x is equal to 4 over 6. Now the reason why students get these type of problems wrong is because they think to get x by itself, we're going to do 4 over 6 divided by tan. We're not going to divide by tan. To properly solve this, we're going to take the inverse of tan. So we're talking about what you see on my screen, right? We're going to multiply both sides by the inverse of tan. Those tans cancel out. We're left with theta. The angle is equal to the inverse of tangent times 4 over 6. So when I go through now and I put punch this in my calculator, right? 4 divided by 6 and we go and hit second tan. I know x theta is going to be equal to 33.69 degrees. And once we compare that to our answer choices, the closest and best answer will be answer choice A, which is 34 degrees. So in this problem, they want us to figure out what is the value of x. But we notice that there is a missing angle here. And there's a trick to it. They tell us that side AB is congruent to side AC, meaning what? Opposite angles are congruent. So this side that's missing should also be x plus 20 if it's congruent to the other side. So now that we know this, we could create an equation to solve and figure out what x is. So 3x plus x plus 20 plus x plus 20 is now equal to 180. And we're just solving a regular equation. So we combine like terms to get 5x plus 40 is equal to 180. I subtract 40 from both sides to get 5x by itself. So I have 5x is equal to 140. And now to get x by itself, we're just going to divide by 5. And we know that 5, I'm sorry, not 5, we should know that x should be equal to 28. So just remember, they asked you for the value of x. They did not ask you to go in and figure out what the angle is. So don't plug it in, but be mindful if they did ask you for a specific angle. So they're giving us a trig function and they're not asking us to solve anything. They're just asking us, hey, based on each of these trig functions, what would the relationship be? So let's just go back and write our acronym, right? We have SOHCAHTOA. So what they're telling us right now is, hey, sine, which is the opposite of the hypotenuse is five over 13. 
So if the opposite side, right, is 5 and the hypotenuse is 13, we should automatically know that this adjacent side is 12. This is a special triangle, a special right triangle, similar to a 3, 4, 5, right? We know the sides are 5, 12, 13. So now that I know that, all we have to do now is fill in the rest of the information. So if we're talking about cos x, that's adjacent over hypotenuse. So that should be 12 over 13. When we look at our answer choices, D and C had the incorrect cos of x. And then when we go to tangent, we know tangent is the opposite over adjacent, which would be 5 over 12. And when I go back and look at my answer choices, A is the correct one that satisfies it. Another tip. Just go in, right, and label each side based off the angle, and it will make it a hundred times easier for you to get these questions a hundred percent correct. So this question is a little bit different because they give us an equation or part of the equation, and they want us to figure out what R is. So there's two ways we could do go about this, right? So we could understand that the we could use the distance formula, I should say which is the square root of x squared minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, right? So now when we plug this in, understand that we have the two points. The first point is the one they identify, which is negative 3, 2. And the second point is going to be the center of the circle, which is negative 3, negative 1. So this is what we're plugging in when we're talking about x's and y's, right? And the distance, remember, we're talking about the edge of the circle to the center. So we could replace d if we want with r so that we understand that the answer we get is going to represent the radius. So when I go back in now and I fill this in, I have negative 3, minus negative 3 squared plus 2 minus negative 1 squared. So when I simplify this now, r is equal to the square root of what? 0 squared plus 3 squared. So now we know r is equal to the square root of 9, and we know the square root of 9 is just 3. So my answer choice has to be A. But before we go on to the, other, the next problem, let's just say we drew, uh, drew a diagram, right? And I know my drawing is it's, it's horrible, right? But let's say this is the center of the circle. And at the center, this is going to be what? Negative 3, negative 1, right? And then at the edge of the circle, we have another point that is what? Negative 3, 2. If we look at the y values, right, we just had to go up 3. So we had to go to 0, 1, then 2. And if we count that, this is 1, 2, and 3. Just another way for us to visualize this problem or go about it if you didn't want to do all this algebra. In this next example, we have two parallel lines, and they're asking us to identify angle y. So there's a few things we need to understand, right? We know that this angle and y are supplementary, meaning that what? They are they equal to 180 degrees. And when we pay attention to 3x plus 20 and the angle under it, right? We know that those two angles are also supplementary, meaning they're going to equal 180 degrees. And they're also corresponding to these two bottom angles, meaning what? I could create an equation with 3x plus 20 plus 5x plus 40 is equal to 180 based off that information. So now when I go through, I have 8x plus 60 is equal to 180. After I simplify, we have 8x is equal to 120. And then after I divide, we know that x is equal to 15. Now, there's two ways that we could figure out what our answer is. We could go ahead and plug this into 3x plus 20. So this is what I mean. So we have 3 times 15 
plus 20. So now we have 45 plus 20, meaning that angle is 65 degrees. So if I take 180 and subtract 65, that means angle Y has to be 115 degrees as a final answer. Now, another thing you could have done to eliminate as much math was understand that angle Y and 5X plus 40 are alternate exterior angles, meaning they are the same. So I could have just went in and did 5 times 15 plus 40 to get angle Y with less steps. So once we multiply 5 and 15, we get 75 plus 40. And once we simplify that, we will get the same answer of 115 degrees. And like I said, Y and 5X plus 40, alternate exterior angles. So they're asking us for the angle BAC, which is this angle right here. So the way that we want to solve this is a very simple step. We should understand that angle 115 plus this angle here, right? This is a straight line. It equals 180 degrees. So if I take 180 and minus 115, I could get that angle right there and then I could find the last angle. So once I subtract, I figure that this angle right here is 65 degrees. So what does this mean? We have 53 plus 65 plus X is equal to 180. So now once I combine those like terms and get 118 plus X is equal to 180, we know X is just equal to 180 minus 118. And we know that last angle should be 62 degrees, which is an answer choice of C. So we're looking at our special right triangle. And there's two ways to solve this, a very simple way and a more complicated way. So the simple way is just understanding that special right triangle relationship, right? Because this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle, meaning what? The legs are the same, right? X, X, X times radical 2. So if my sides are 12 and I just take that 12 and multiply it by radical 2, I know my final answer should be 12 radical 2, which is B. Now, what students want to come in and do is do complicated and extra steps. So they'll come in here and say, OK, Mr. Peters, I could do sine 45 degrees, which is equal to what? Opposite over hypotenuse, which is 12 over X. Then they multiply by X. And then they go from X times sine 45 is equal to 12. They go ahead and divide. Right. And guys, you, you could do this and get the, the correct answer. The only issue is you, with that decimal that you get, you may not understand if you don't have a graphing calculator that it's 12 times radical two. I think it's like 16 point something. So please, if you have this type of problem, remember your special right triangle relationships on the side, especially for the 45, 45, 90 and 30, 60, 90 triangle. So in this problem, they're trying to ask us, what is the measure of the remaining angle? And this could be a very simple problem if you just remember how many sides a hexagon has. If you don't, this is the best way to approach the problem. So number one, we have to know the formula to find the interior angle sum, which is what? 180 times n minus 2. And we know n is just the number of sides. So when we look here, right? They told us that we have the measure of five angles and they're asking us for the remaining one. So I'm going to assume it's six, right? So once we go in and we simplify, we know 180 times six minus two is 180 times four. And that's going to give us an answer of 720. And this is important for us to set our equation. And I'm going to show you guys exactly what I mean. So we're going to take all this information now, right? We have X, because we don't know that last side, plus 160, plus 90, plus 60, plus 160, plus 80 is equal to 720. So now once I simplify, we're going to have X plus, and I want to say this is 550, is equal to 720. Let's just double check this real quick to make sure.
Yep, it's going to be 550. So now to get the last angle, I just subtract 550 from 720. And I know X is equal to 170 degrees for that last angle, which is answer choice D. So we're dealing now with a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And they're asking us, right, for the side length. And remember, there are special relationships for the 30, 60, 90 triangle, right? So this is 30 degrees. This is 60. What is the relationships? This side is X. This side next to the 30 degree angle is X times radical 3. And we know the hypotenuse is 2 times X. So guess what they told us? They said, hey, y'all, X is equal to 7 yards. So we're talking about this side right here. What is the value of y? All we got to do is take 7, multiply it by radical 3. So we should know that our answer is B. If you can remember these side relationships, it makes this 100% easier and faster. And just for practice, if they asked us for Z, all it would be is just 14 because we're taking this side and multiplying it by 2. So we're dealing with transformations and translations. And there's two ways that we could solve this type of problem. So number one, we could go old school, right? They say that triangle JKL is translated four units to the left, five units up. What are the coordinates of image point J or just point J? So let's do it. We go over one, two, three, four. So this means that my X has to be six, right? Negative six. When I look down at my answer choices family, A has the incorrect X, so, so does B, so does D. So off rip, just shifting it, I would have got C as a correct answer, right? Now, another way we could have done this, right? What is the point for J? The point for J is negative two, one. So now let's say if we just added it inside the parentheses, what do I mean? So we have negative two, right? This is X, meaning we shift left or right. It said two units to the left, meaning we're going to subtract four. And then when we go to our Y's, we started off at one for Y. We go five units up, meaning we add. So when I simplify this inside the parentheses, I'm going to get negative six comma six. So there's two ways to solve the same exact problem. Really hope this was helpful. And if this video has been helpful or you like it, smash the like button for us, comment down below, and even subscribe to our channel for more content. So in this next problem, we're dealing with volume and we have two different shapes, meaning we have to use two different formulas. So we know the volume for a cylinder is volume is equal to pi r squared times h. So when we simplify this first, volume is equal to, and it tells us this use 3.14, right? What is my radius? If the diameter is 30, that means my radius is 15 squared. And when I look at my height, right, this is not this is not the height. That's the height of both of them. The height of just the cylinder is 20 feet. They are betting on you to make that mistake. All right. So now we wrote down all the information. And once I simplify and multiply everything out, I should get volume of the cylinder is equal to 14,130 cubic feet. All right. So that's one part that we have so far. So let's put this in the box. Then we go over to the second part of this problem, which is the volume of the cone. So we know volume of a cone is one third pi r squared times the height. So we go in to fill this in, right? We have one third, right, times pi, which is 3.14. What is the r? Just remember, hey, the base is the same thing. It's just, they, say, they share the same radius, meaning what? Not the same radius. They share the same diameter, meaning they have the same radius. My bad, family. So when we go in and put the radius, it's 15 squared. And then when we think about the height, we have to take the height of the whole entire thing, 35, and then subtract the height of the cylinder, which is 20. So the height for just the cone is 15 feet. You have to make sure you subtract. So now that we got that, we go through and we tally this up 
and we say volume for the cone is equal to 3,532.5 cubic feet. So now at this step, hey, we're, we're pretty much done. All we got to do is add both of our answers up. And once we add both of those answers up, I'm going to get an answer of 17,662.5 cubic feet. And the closest answer to that is going to be answer choice B. Just make sure, like I said, math family, you pay attention to that diameter slash radius and you pay attention to taking the difference in height for the cone and the cylinder. So this problem, we're now dealing with these conditional statements, right? And with the conditional statements, we know if P, then Q. But when we talk about the converse of the statement, what occurs is that this relationship gets flipped, meaning if Q, then P. So when we look at this and we say if a road sign is red, then it is a stop sign. All we're doing is writing the reverse statement, meaning if a road sign is a stop sign, then it is red because that is the same statement just written in reverse. So when we talk, talk about these type of converse, uh, contrapositive statements, just try to make sure you practice on them and understand what is the relationship when we're talking about P to Q, Q to P, or if not P, if not Q. Those relationships make this 10 times easier. And just remember with converse, it's always the reverse. I think these are the easiest statements and the easiest type of problems to get right. Moving on to the last problem of this video. And if you found this video helpful, we're going to ask that you smash the like button for us. Subscribe to the channel and leave comments down below so we could put out more content like this. So they're asking us for the value of X. And the only reason why students get this wrong is because they forget that this should be equal to 360 degrees. This is why we have that formula 180 times the number of sides minus two, right? We have four sides, so 180 times four minus two is gonna give me 180 times two, which is 360. So anytime you forget, just plug it into that equation. So now we go back to this and we create our equation, right? 2x minus 5 plus x plus 15 plus 3x plus 80 is equal to what? Not 180, but 360. So now I go through and I combine my like terms. So we have 2x, x, and 3x. So once we combine, I get 6x. And then once I combine, let's see, 5 and 15, that gives me 10 plus 80 gives me 90, and this is equal to 360. So now I combine my like terms by subtracting 90 on both sides. We get 6x is equal to 270. And to figure out what x is, we're just going to divide by 6, and we should know x is equal to 45 degrees. So that is the value of x. We really hope that this geometry EOC review was helpful for you, math family. If it was, smash the like button for us, subscribe to our channel, and leave comments for future videos you guys would like to see on our channel. And just know there's going to be another geometry EOC video coming out shortly after this one. Thank you guys so much again for watching and supporting Algebra 1 with Mr. Peters.